In this video, we will talk about uh, vertex transitive graphs. So a vertex transitive graph is one, is a graph that just has a single orbit. And so what that means is that for any two vertices, there's an automorphism that takes one vertex to the other vertex. So any two vertices are similar. In particular, what this means is that if G is vertex transitive, since I know that automorphisms have to preserve degree, if G is vertex transitive, then G is regular. So that's a necessary condition for a graph to be uh, vertex transitive. It's not a sufficient condition though. A regular graph is not necessarily vertex transitive. We'll take a look at an example in a second. So G1 and G2 here are two examples of vertex transitive graphs. So maybe I'll focus in on G1 here. How can I see that this is vertex transitive? Well, one, there's sort of a, an, uh, an obvious automorphism that sends the inside cycle to the outside cycle. Just swap the, this vertex with that vertex and the other way around. Do the same for each of these pairs of vertices. So go along the spokes, that's uh, how we can say that. So there's that automorphism that swaps the inside five cycle with the outside five cycle. And then we also have these rotations. Notice this has rotational symmetry. There are five uh, rotations there, including the trivial rotation. Um, that would be the identity. And so if I wanna say get this vertex to any other vertex, I don't know, maybe this one, on the inside cycle. Well, first I would perform this swapping of the five cycles. I would use that automorphism. And then I would do rotations until that vertex becomes this vertex. Um, and so that, so since composition of any two automorphisms is again an automorphism, that means there's some automorphism that sends this vertex to that vertex. Uh, same idea as if I want to send, say, this vertex to a vertex on the outside five cycle like that, well, I'll just do a rotation. I can do a rotation by one and then a rotation by another. That'll be an automorphism. And so any two vertices, there is some automorphism that sends one to the other. So this is vertex transitive. Uh, along uh, also this graph G2, uh, which is K222 tripartite graph, is also vertex transitive. And I'll let you sort of look through it and see that you can uh, find an automorphism that sends any vertex to any other vertex. So let's see. Those two are vertex transitive. Notice each one is regular. As I said above, this should be true because automorphisms have to preserve degree. Um, and if any two vertices uh, are in the same orbit, then they have to have the same degree. And vertex transitive means every vertex is in the same orbit. And so it has to be, has to be regular. However, not every regular graph is vertex transitive. So let's take a look at a couple of uh, examples here. So this is a three regular graph, three regular. Um, but, and it should be sort of clear from just looking at it. We'll want to come up with a better argument than just look at it uh, to see that this is not vertex transitive. Um, so one way we could see that this is not vertex transitive, there's a few different arguments you can make here. I just spotted another that maybe I'll, maybe it's easier than my other argument. Notice this vertex is adjacent or is incident with a bridge. Same with this vertex. These two vertices are both incident with a bridge. However, this vertex down here is not incident with any bridge. And so that just goes to show that I can't, this vertex here is not in the same orbit as this vertex here. There's no automorphism that can possibly send this one to that one uh, because one is incident with a bridge and the other is not. Incident with a bridge, that is an example of a structural property of the graph. Another way we could see this is by looking at number of triangles uh, that a vertex is contained in. So again, we'll focus on this vertex. This is not a part of any triangle. However, this vertex down here is a part of one, uh, one triangle. Right? There's one triangle that this is a part of, but this one's part of no triangle. So this is not, not vertex transitive. Again, those two vertices that I highlighted cannot be, uh, they're not in the same orbit. There's no automorphism that sends to one to the other. So it's not vertex transitive. G4, on the other hand, it's a little bit harder to tell that it's not vertex transitive. So this one is four regular. This one is four regular. 
um, but it's also not vertex transitive. So again, that's a little bit harder to see. I'm going to focus in on this vertex. And I'm going to count triangles. This is You might come up with a better argument than me, but what I thought of was number of triangles that this vertex is contained in. Um, so let's see. This vertex is contained in exactly two triangles. Contained in two triangles. Uh, but if I pick, say, this vertex here, or this vertex, or this vertex, or this vertex. By the way, those are all... Um, those are all in the same orbit. Uh, this vertex here is a member of one, two, three triangles. So number of triangles that the vertex is contained in, well, this is a structural property of the graph. That is, there is no automorphism that sends this vertex that's contained in two tri triangles to this vertex, which is contained in three triangles. And therefore, the orbit consists of more than one, or sorry, the, the number of orbits is greater than one, and so this is not vertex transitive. So as soon as you can identify some difference between uh, two vertices in terms of their structural properties, their degree, number of vertices they are adjacent to their eccentricities, any property like this of the vertex, as soon as you identify two that are that are different, you know that the graph is not vertex transitive. Um, now there is a uh, long-standing theorem, or sorry, not a theorem, a long-standing conjecture uh, that, so if you look at these two vertex transitive graphs, these are both Hamiltonian. Uh, However, not every vertex transitive graph is Hamiltonian. For example, the Peterson graph and this one over here, the Coxeter graph. So this is the Peterson Coxeter graph. These are both vertex transitive. Both of them are vertex transitive. I'll let you check the Cox graph on your own. Um, it's a nice exercise to look at the Peterson graph and show that's vertex transitive. It is. Uh, but they are not Hamiltonian. Uh, along with these two are the... So this is called a, either triangle replaced or truncated, as our book calls it in which you take a graph, uh, a three regular graph in particular, and you replace each vertex with a triangle. It has to be three regular to begin with, otherwise this won't be properly defined. So notice that we replace each vertex with a triangle, and then I, uh, we have one vertex, uh, one edge coming off of each part of the triangle uh, for each of the three edges that, were, that came off of the original vertex. And so this will still be a three regular graph. Um, these are also uh, vertex transitive. Each of these is also vertex transitive, but not Hamiltonian. Uh, now, Royal's conjecture, let me write down here. Royal's conjecture is that um, besides uh, graphs of order one and two, these are the only two, uh, are, are the only set of vertex transitive graph, connected vertex transitive graphs that are not Hamiltonian. So this is Royal's conjecture. Every vertex transitive graph, uh, graph, vertex transitive graph, oh my gosh, graph is uh, Hamiltonian, except when G is K1, K2, the Pearson graph, the truncated Peterson graph, the Coxeter graph, 
for the truncated coxeter graph. So there's that's Royal's conjectures. There just exists these these six graphs that are connected in vertex transitive but not Hamiltonian, and every other connected vertex transitive graph is Hamiltonian. Um, and so this is certainly an interesting conjecture. Uh, Lovash's conjecture is a similar one to this, and that is that every connected vertex transitive graph contains a Hamiltonian path. You'll notice all of these graphs that I showed you, uh, while not Hamiltonian, they do contain a Hamiltonian path. They are traceable. And so that's Lovash's conjecture. Um, where, by the way, I think just won an Abel Prize, uh, Lovash. I just went to a talk where they mentioned uh, Lovash just won a, an Abel Prize, this is, which is like the uh, uh, Abel Prize is... Uh, it's like the Nobel Prize, but in mathematics is, is one way to put it. Um, right, Lovash's conjecture is that every connected... Maybe I'll write this one down too. Every connected vertex transitive graph... contains a Hamiltonian path. So a couple conjectures here about vertex transitive graphs. Um, and then that's it for, uh, for this section. See you next time.